I've just bought myself a new car and it's this, a Mark 1 BMW X5 V8 from 2002. I recently drove one of these for a car wow video, liked it so much, thought I'd buy my own. Trouble is they can be a bit unreliable and rather expensive to fix. So in this video, I'm gonna take this car to one of the leading BMW specialists in the UK. They're gonna assess it, take it for a test drive and give me a bill for how much everything will cost to fix on it. This video could be very scary. I've come to BMW Park Lane Service Centre in Park Royal to get my X5 assessed by Mitch Costerly. Now, Mitch, what's your role here? I'm a master technician. A master technician. Do you have much experience with the E53 X5? I have. These things were out when my apprenticeship started, so I cut my teeth working on these things. And what I can get you to do today, right, I want you to basically grade this car out of 10. I think I've bought a good one, but I'm not sure. It might be absolutely dreadful in your eyes. So I want you to walk around the exterior, grade the exterior. Then what we'll do, we'll go inside it, we'll have a look at the quality of the inside, see what works and what doesn't work. And then we'll go underneath it, get on the ramp. Might be some things <laughs> leaking. And then we'll go for a drive. And overall, you'll grade it out of 10. Not a problem. So BMW Park Lane is owned by BMW UK, isn't it? Yep, that's correct. We have the sales department on Park Lane. We have two service departments, one at Park Royal, and another one south of the river in Bath. Okay, so this is basically their flagship service centre. And as you can hear, there's lots of work going on. So let's get to work ourselves now and go around this car and judge it. And let's start here at the front then, so. You've got a little bit of discoloration in your headlights. A few dense stone chips in the bottom. I mean, this is a 20 year old car, right? So th th that's all fine. Yeah, I'd, to be honest, it's actually pretty good for the age. What about so the, um, the headlights themselves? They are Xenons, aren't they? They are Xenons, yep, factory Xenons. Your front wing, on this side, just starting a bit of paint peeling, a bit of fading in the paint, a little dent there. What is so. causing this like this peeling? Do you know what? I'm gonna film it with this camera here so you can see what Mitch and I can see. Here we go, let's have a look at this. So what's going on there? Um, probably just a little bit of age. It may have had some work done previously and it's not been painted the best, but considering the age of it, something you'd potentially expect. So. How about the wheels? Look at the wheels. A little bit of corrosion and paint peeling on this rim. No big curbing or anything like that, so nothing of major concern. Tyres on the outside look all right. There's no bulge or impact damage there. What's the quality of the tyres like? Do I need new tyres? I was thinking of getting some. Um, maybe a little bit of feathering here. That's something we'll look at better when we've got the car in the air. Uh -huh. We can rotate the tyre around and look at it fully. But from the outside, it looks okay for now. Down the side. The paint looks a little bit dull. I was worried that it might be like, full of filler. Does it look like it is? Have you, have you got any way of testing it? You can use the old school technique of- a You've got a magnet. And it sticks. It sticks. So <laughs> Sticking is good. I wouldn't say there's anything of major concern there. You can't, there's no ripples down the side of it. And if you, if you look at it down here, you've maybe a little issue with the gap there, which would probably point towards maybe this being off before. Oh yeah, look. It wouldn't have come out of factory like that, would it? No. So you Not think the door all. might have come off and someone's refitted the, it? The door or the wing might have had a little bit of work there, but again, if it has, it hasn't been the worst repair in the world. This rear wheel is worse than the front wheel. Look at yeah, that, that's a right old mess, look at that. That's been repainted before, I think. You've got a bunch of corrosion and all, <laughs> all in there. And what's going on here? It's like it's got, so, got the pox or something. It's got monkey pox. <laughs> it looks like the bumper's <laughs> been off before. This trimmed like a black plastic, but this has been painted. Yeah, that is, look, you can see the black like paint on there. And it, why have like they done that? Oh. Isn't that overspray from that, or I don't know? Well, it looks underneath like it has been possibly filled or primed. So, and you can see down here, like it's got a little bit of the primer and stuff. So it looks like whoever did it may have done it deliberately, but I can't explain why. I can't understand why either. But, but this is all like just general, like, you know, day-to-day -day living. It's a 20-year-old car, the odd, knock and bang, like, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's the beauty of having an old car like this. I'm not so worried about it, I'm not so precious. The rear bumper's definitely been off again. You can see the paint here. What is going on here? That looks like someone's used a house roller. Like you do, like your wall at home. <laughs> or, or a rattle can, but it's not. Is that Australian the... for spray paint, a rattle can? That's something I picked up over here. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say that's either been done at home or a poor body shop. Okay, so I've seen a lot of old X5s, these E53s, with cloudy light areas yeah, when here. they get water and stuff in and the seals tend to leak, but you've got a little bit of darkness in there. This side doesn't look too bad. That side actually looks quite good. 
this one, yeah, you've got a little bit around the edge there, but... That darkness yeah, there. Yeah, I think oh. it's a little bit, maybe a bit of water's got in there and then... Yeah, let's move on from that. Let's go around this side. As you can see, if you compare it to the other side, this side's actually still the plastic. Oh yeah, that looks, that looks better, doesn't it? Yeah. And all these panels are metal as well. There's no filler in there, you don't think? Not from the old magnet tests, but it's a very scientific way of doing things. Yeah, you can use a paint depth gauge <laughs> to be more accurate, yes. but we just want to do this quickly. And you can't tell just by the naked eye, your trained eye, Mitch. You can't see anything that looks untoward. Um, no, not particularly. You've got a mirror that's taped on. Oh, I didn't notice that. I really didn't notice that at all. So I believe you've got folding mirrors, so yeah. that one's not going to work. Uh, I haven't tried the folding mirrors. <laughs> We should try the folding mirrors when we get inside. Both rooms on this side, pretty much similar to the other side. I think just peeling paint. I wouldn't be surprised if that's been repainted once upon a time in uh -huh. this life. Yeah, you can see a bit of feathering and cracking on the outer edges. Yeah, these here. are quite old, these. So I'll tell you what, as we're going around, you're picking up bits and pieces. At the end of it, as well as getting a grade for the car, we'll find out how much it's going to cost to actually make this perfect for the age. Just notice that. Yep, you've got What's a... happened to the badge? They've changed the logo. It's not the blue propeller anymore. It's more the silver now, and like partially white propeller. That is either a genuine badge that's been aged or the fact it's kind of half lifted up makes me suspect it's had one put on. Really? So someone might have stolen a badge and then they and put a new one on on the sheet. Possibly come from eBay. So then overall, despite the badge, what do you grade the exterior of this car out of 10 considering it's a 20 year old car? To be honest, I'd have to give it a seven. It's pretty good. It doesn't look like it's full of filler. There's no big dents, no scratches. It's actually a really, really nice car. I'll take that and let's see if that thing continues on the inside. Before Mitch has a look at the inside of this car, I thought I'd tell you that obviously before I bought this thing, I did a vehicle history check with my friends at Car Vertical. And here's the report for this X5. So look, I think coming back on mileage, theft, accidents, finance. So it was all clean. So I was happy to buy it. Scan down, I could like check various like MOT reports as well. A couple of things here and there. Maybe Mitch will pick one later, like um, problems with the suspension bushing. Will you notice those? We'll find out. Anyhow, I was very happy to see that the mileage vouchers as well. So it's got 129,000 miles on the clock. The last MOT said it had 126.6 thousand miles on the clock. It's always worth doing this because you never know what you're going to get. So here's a report from Car Vertical from a similar X5 and E53. It's actually the facelift version. And this one, whoop, it's got a warning for accident damage. Now, Car Vertical will actually show if it's been stolen or whether there's outstanding finance on it, but this one had accident damage. And if I scan down, sometimes with Car Vertical, you get photos showing the accident damage itself. Now, this is really handy because sometimes people repair the cars, put them back on the road, and you don't know that they've ever been damaged before. But if you've got some photos like this, you can see for yourself. So that would definitely put you off buying that particular car. Thankfully, mine had none of those issues. So I'm very pleased about that. If you're thinking about buying a used car and you want to check its history, check out my friends at Car Vertical, all right? And use the discount code Watson10 for 10% off. There is a link in the description and the pinned comment for this video. Right, and Mitch, welcome to the inside of my beautiful X5. What do you think of it? First impression is pretty good. Dashboard's all in pretty good nick. Perfect, actually for the age of it. On both sides, you see the fabric starting to peel up. Yeah, it's like wrinkled stockings, isn't it? Yeah, got it on both sides. That side, your passenger side's actually a little bit worse. Yeah, I really um, noticed that when I'm looking over there. It's like, ah, oh, it really um, does my head in. Can I stretch that out quite easily? Is it a nightmare? Um, you can, you'll have to take, the trims will have to come off and it's you can stretch it out and then. This sounds like a nightmare. Let, let's move on. There's a little bit of goo around your cup holders in here and yeah it's not me hand sanitizer whenever you buy a used car you don't know who's been in it always have some hand sanitizer not that i've got ocd after covid or anything like that <laughs> everything else everything seems to work you've still got your cigarette lighter yeah essential for a non-smoker like me yep essential for everybody it's just a surprise <laughs> the car at this age still has it there does it work though let's have a look that's looking very much like a no. No, not at the moment <laughs> consumption 18.3 miles to the gallon all the pixels are still there Normally on these, works. are they starting to fail, these little They've visual displays? They've always been temperamental. And they fail and go blank. What is that noise? It does this noise. Has someone fitted some kind of like Bluetooth system? When I turn it on after about like 30 seconds, it goes beep like that. It looks like something non-genuine because you've got your little microphone up there. Don't believe that is BMW standard equipment. No, it doesn't That's, look it, no. especially the one over there for yeah. the passenger. And I do not believe it made those noises. <laughs> no, it's a bit shocking. Your display works. 
It's all, it does work. But it's got some spots. The fact it works and it's genuine, pretty good. It's got a telly. The telly doesn't work because the old signal has been canceled for digital. Yeah. That's what you get. A load of like furs. It's one of those magic eye kind of images. So if you stare it long enough, you will see a dolphin. Yes. It works. Works perfect. Both sides. Should be able to get it everywhere. Heated seats. They work. I can attest to that. So then, you're quite liking the front. Let's check out the back seats before you give a verdict on the interior. Right then, Mitch, welcome to the back seats of my X5. What do you think? Again, pretty good nick for the age of the car. Leather's in good condition. It's a bit wrinkly, but not too bad, be expected. Don't have any wear marks around your edges. They tend to get wear there from people getting in and out and all that sort of stuff, especially with kids jumping in and out. This is actually really good. I mean, no, it's almost are, as new. Really, really good. Pockets, which is a nice option in the back of the seat. Got some goodies in this one. Covers for your Isofix. Yeah, look, Isofix, I really like that. I can fit my daughter's child seat in there. I think it's quite an early vehicle to have Isofix. Really handy. What else you got in here? Ooh, what's that? Remote control for a TV or something, so. Is it the original one for the TV? Did it come with a remote? I don't believe so. Not for the front one. You do have this trim here with your in and out and TV buttons. It's so something I would have to look into to see whether it's genuine. Look, it's a bit wobbly. It is a bit wobbly, which again, mm. raises a little bit of suspicion <laughs> as to if it is genuine or not, but something you have to find out. But again, you've got a cigarette lighter. This one works. Oh, look, it's working. That's good. So if I need to smoke, I need to hop into the back. Yeah, yeah, it's good for the kids. I just noticed this actually. Ah, a bit of history about the car. So it looks like it was auctioned off in June, maybe June this year. We'll actually come to the service manual and stuff a bit later on because, yeah, I think that must have been June. And is this the disc for the CD, for the uh, navigation CD or something? It's Finding Nemo. I would say that's better. <laughs> it's probably more accurate. I can also see where that big beeping awful noise is from now that I'm in the back seat. Right, what is it? You have a massive big speaker screwed into the side under your glove box on the passenger front. Ah. So that's where that's coming from. Aftermarket Bluetooth in it. Right, one last thing to show you, it's the boot. One thing that really annoys me about this car. My uh, button doesn't work. Button doesn't work, I have to do it on the key or other oh, button, in button the... inside, yeah. Is this a common fault? Yeah, it's relatively well known. Is it easy to fix? Um, or hideously expensive? Probably a combination of both. This part operates though. I love this bit, the folded down the tail they get you bit. But all the trims are intact, nothing torn or worn. Although you're... What's the rear? Oh, spare wheel, full size, well, relatively full size, which you don't see very often. You've got the spare wheel, up that, up like that, pulls that out. Oh, wow. That stays there, and then you can lift your wheel out easily. You were like, what, it's 20 years ago since you worked on these, so even remember that it did this yeah, is good. I'll drive out of here and forget that it even does this. <laughs> Let's put it back. I'll let you do that. That is a really clever feature. It sometimes takes a little bit of wiggling and jiggling to get back in properly, but... Right, okay, so you've seen around the outside of the car, a couple of bits and pieces like that not working. Overall, what do you think of the interior of this car? You gave it 7 out of 10 for the exterior. How about the interior? Do you know what? For the age of it again, it's really good. You've got no tears, leather's all intact. I think you're probably at a good 7.5, to be honest. Should we just like bump it up to an 8? Always round up. The Germans round up, you see. <laughs> At every decimal point, they round up, and that's why the 6.2 litre AMG engine... Oh, sorry, I'm... I was going around corners, better, so it's all right. <laughs> anyway, so eight. We call it an eight, then. Eight for the interior, seven for the exterior, but now there's a moment of truth. We've got to look underneath. Right, Mitch, we've got the car up on a ramp. You've taken some covers off. What can you see up in here? Anything to be worried about? You have... A power steering leak, starters. Is that what that is? And you can see oh, that. Yeah. You can see someone's had a go. That's not genuine. <laughs> That's uh, not an official repair from BMW. No, we okay. Don't. That looks like it's had a split and someone's put something over the top of it. You've got an alternator belt. Your AC belt is pretty badly cracked. So oh I'll gosh, look at all the cracks in that. I'll be looking at replacing that. The air conditioning does work though for now. Yeah, until that belt snaps. Fair enough. Can't see any coolant leaks, but you do have an oil leak, which we can spot a little bit. More oil right leak here. sounds very bad. Let's have a look. Oh God, yeah, oh my gosh. See look at this, this is, yeah. Is it broken? I wouldn't use that word so much, but it I'm is I'm starting leaking. to panic right now. It's coming from the top 
and leaks down the side. So before you go panicking about anything down below, place the top, clean it off. Is a leak from the bottom worse than a leak from the top? Only with the amount of work required to fix them. So the, the top's easier to get to basically? Yeah, because once you start looking at the bottom, you've got all this front axle suspension oh, okay. bracing and all that sort of stuff that tends to have to come down. It is pretty standard on these to have rocker cover leaks. So it's a normal feature of the E53. It's, it's this, standard fit. This, <laughs> this engine type, it is a pretty common really? occurrence, yeah. So not to worry about it, just keep an eye on the oil level. Yeah, if that's been like that for a decade and no one's done anything, it's gonna look like that. Well, it's kind of like um, rust proofing. You can look at it that way. So that's nothing to worry about, but I will still get you to price up putting the new gasket on because it's the gasket around the rocker cover, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll price that up. Let's move on to the suspension, the steering. Just a bit of corrosion around here, not much to worry about in the edge of the car. It's all still pretty solid. Uh -huh. It's just your front bushes here. Yeah, okay, There's, I can see those. They've started to crack. I know that the tracking rod here on the right hand side is seized because had the tracking done the car, they could change the left, but they couldn't do anything about this because it's just solid. Yeah, to get that adjusted, we'll have to put the new one on. How about the rest of the suspension and the bushings throughout the car and at the back as well? There's a few issues with the back bushings. Let's have um, a quick look. Good news is someone's already been in and had a go at these ones, look like they've been replaced. And these rear bushings are starting to wear off. Without driving, it'd have to see the very back, there. so these up here, a little bit yep. kind of, cra oh, I can see that's cracked, that, that is, yeah, cracked. it's cracked. So that can cause a bit of play, make bit it drive play. a bit loosely. Once they go, you'll have a knock. Well, I don't think there's any knocks, but you'll find out when you drive it in a moment. <laughs> you also got one of your drop links for your rear stabilizer, split and leaking grease. Oh yeah, I can see, yeah, uh, right. And someone has also had some repairs done to the diff. Oh, they don't come out the factory like that? No, no, that is definitely <laughs> not. That is not to German standards. All right, so suspension, it's okay. Yeah, it's kind of, is it what you expect for this age? Yeah, well, it's got air suspension on the back as well, and it works. That is a good sign for a 20 year old car. Because that could be expensive to that replace. Would be very, very expensive. So if we're looking at eventually one day doing the bushings, should I do the shock absorbers as well, just as good practice? 130,000 miles, or would you just, you know, leave it and accept that it's a 2,700 pound car? On a car this age, this price range. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. One last thing, the brakes. I'm going to be towing with this car, hopefully, so I just want to make sure the brakes are okay. What have you found? You've looked over the brakes, haven't you? Yeah, I've looked over front and rear. Rears are fine. Everything measures out perfect. The front ones, your front discs are a bit low. You've got plenty of meat left on your pads. Next time around, you'll definitely need to get your disc replaced. The underside of this car, what you've seen of it, and what you'd expect for a 20-year-old E53, what do you rate out of 10? I think I'd have to um, match it with the interior, to be honest. An eight? I'll give it an eight. The oil leaks, for example, are common. Like I said, I've done my apprenticeship on these <laughs> almost 20 years ago, and I was fixing them back then. So okay, it right. is a pretty standard thing on that engine. But the engine itself is quite solid, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're giving it an eight for underneath. What really matters is how it dries, right? Do you want to drive it? Yeah, let's go. Before we go for a drive, we thought it was wise to plug the car into the OBD reader to see if there's any fault codes. And we do have a few here, don't we? Got a few. I don't think there's too much to be worried about. Oh, okay. So we'll clear them down, go for a drive and see if anything comes back. I like the sound of that. Just clear them off, forget about them. And if they pop up again, we know we've got an issue that's recurring. Whereas these could just be like- They could be historical. Historic. Okay. Let's hope they're historical because this car has actually been well maintained. So here's a service history book and it's, it's pretty much full, isn't it? Pretty much on time. It should be every, every two years. It's BMW official, like? Been to a BMW dealer the whole time. 119,000 miles, so it's about 10,000 miles ago. 119,000 miles. Woo! That was the last service at a BMW dealership. That's pretty impressive. So it should drive well. Should. All those vital fluids are in there. Because if you break it, you buy it. And it's now five grand because it's been vouched as being an eight out of 10 by a BMW Master Tech. That's all right, we'll speak to the boss. <laughs> Let's drive it now. Right, Mitch, in the driver's seat. Take care of it and go easy on your right foot because the economy's not great. Let's see what you think of it driving. Oh, look, straight away. There's a nicer one than mine. It's a facelift as well. It's the IS, isn't it? 4.8 IS, yeah. Oh, so shall we see if we can just ditch this one and get into that one? I'd prefer the engine in this one. Really? The older generation, I think they're a bit better. 
For the BMW geeks, this has an M62 engine. Yes. The one in that is an N... N62. This one is seen to be more reliable. Yeah. Not really quick though. It's like something like 270 odd horsepower. It's a big car though. For 270 horsepower, but my Toyota GR Yaris, it's got three cylinders, 1.6 litres, and that's almost the same power output as this big 4.4 litre V8. Come a long way the last 20 years. <laughs> now, one thing I noticed when I started driving this for the first time, the steering seems heavy, and seeing that leak for the power steering fluid, is, is it related or is it just the way they no, are, sir? Yeah, your power steering fluid level's fine. Oh. Um, I did check that under the bonnet, but this is what they've always felt like. They are a bit heavier. This generation of car around this time, like E46s, E53s, E39 5 Series, it's just the feel of the hydraulic steering that's that is the way they are because this is e39 5 series generation yeah. isn't it yeah it's actually very there's a lot of things in common electrically as well with that e39 despite the tracking rod it is driving nice and straight like sitting in an old sofa especially even with the steering and the electric seats do work like they, they do fully work and the electrical steering column i tell you what not many rattles no nice and quiet to be honest a good trade of these cars they didn't rattle that much. Was it like BMW going, look, this is our first SUV, let's make sure it's solid as hell. Have a bit of an accelerate going up to 40. What does it feel like? Feels the way it should. It's got a nice little pull to it. And it, oh, that sounded nice higher up. And it's got the old style BMW trait where it, it pulls higher up in the rev range. You don't get that so much in modern cars because they're all torquey and turbo. Right, we're coming to a stop here. Try the brakes. Have you got that clunky sound? Or is it fine? It's Pretty. there a little bit. Oh, really? But it's not too bad, because when it gets really bad, you feel it. So and that's the steering. bushings in the front? That's the bushings in the front. Being a little bit loose, that when you brake, you can feel a little you feel bit like the Yeah, it feels like the front axle's like moving a little bit, but you can hear it a little bit, feel it a bit, but when they get really bad, you can really feel it in through the steering and stuff as well. Is it worth me doing that, really? I don't want to spend any money on it. Not at the moment. I'd wait till it. Wait till you really know. <laughs> okay. That's what you want to hear when you've got two thousand seven hundred pound car because it can soon become a five thousand seven hundred pound car, can't it? And that's why these things are so cheap, right? Because if you start doing repairs on them, and we'll find out if we do everything that we I'd like to do that you've suggested on this, how much it could come to. Oh, so that was it moving then. So. The kick down on the gearbox, fine. That's nice. And then it sounds good. It revs nice. It's nice and smooth. So it brings back memories. Being a main dealer, we don't see good ones of these very often. Uh -huh. And this one is a good one for the age. Out of 10, for the drive, what are you going to give it? Bear in mind, you've given it seven for the exterior, eight for the interior, and eight for the underside and the mechanics. Of course, it's a V8. I'm going to give it a nine. Nine! <laughs> it's a nine for the drive. I'm so pleased. So you think for £2,700, this has been a good buy? Definitely. If you bought a diesel, it wouldn't be higher than an eight. <laughs> Fair enough. So Mitch has driven the car. He's assessed it. And you've established that it's a very good car considering it's 20 years old. Yes. But if you wanted to make it light new, make it perfect, there are a few things that you picked out. And you've priced all those up now, and you're gonna tell me how much it would cost me to make this car the Dream X5, yeah? I'll give you the paperwork and let you have a quick feed through. Okay, so there's... Um, on the last page there, at the bottom right-hand corner, you can um, see the price. Okay, three pages. So this is parts and labor. Okay. Right. So, um, let me run through some of these things before I tell you the price. We've got the mounts, £177.90. Then we've got the gaskets and stuff for the rocker, rocker cover. Covers. Is this with fitting as well? Yeah. 341 yeah. I thought it'd be more than that, to be fair, but still quite a lot of money. So that's the front pads and discs, yeah? Yes. That's £440 all in for the front pads and discs. So I'll wait till they start grinding. Steering hose, 266 the thermostat, because actually the fault codes didn't come back apart from one. The thermostat fault. Could be quite important that. That's £205 fitted, yeah? Yeah. 
and you've got your coolant on top of that actually so oh you know, so 100, quid. 100 pounds for coolant okay Draining and refilling all the coolant yes the biggest single item here is like 1014 pounds for swing arms i didn't remember you saying anything about swing arms yeah that's your rear control arms for those bushes in the rear they come as a whole arm you can't buy those bushes separate you can't buy the little rubber bit separate you have to buy the no, whole you have to get the whole arm for those inside ones let's move on the door mirror yeah that's a lot it's like 472 pounds and wait, the, these numbers that I'm quoting don't include 20% VAT either. And that brings me on to the, the total bill. Parts and labour with VAT, £4,972. It doesn't need doing though, does it, necessarily, That's to make it perfect? That is to make it as good a car as it could possibly be. But it's a pretty good car. It's a pretty good car and it, it cost £2,700. That would turn it into a seven. £1,700 car, which I could then sell the next day for £2,700 again. We won't do that. There is one thing we might do. The bonnet badge, £60. We can do that. What, you mean you'll do that for free? I think we'll be able to sort something. <laughs> we'll go and change it then if it's free. Otherwise, it was staying faded. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think of my car in the comments, all right? If you want to watch some other videos, click on the windows and don't forget to click on my face to subscribe to this channel. Oh, there we go. Thank you very much for that, Mitch. No have a problem. nice nice new badge there and i should point out it's 40 pounds for the badge but that bit of labor that mitch just did that that was 20 quid